Hi, Phil. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the podcast. How are you doing? You're welcome, Ethan. I'm good. Yeah, mate. You? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So you were just mentioning then before we started recording that you're doing workshops and you're writing and stuff. Can you tell us more about that, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, well, me and Craig, Craig Cash, you know, who wrote uh, The Royal Family and Early Doors with, uh, we've got a play that we've written um, that's uh, set in Blackpool called uh, Can't Do Right for Doing Wrong, it's called. And we're just, uh, we've got a couple of producers on board and it's, so we're looking at, uh, we're speaking to the Blackpool Grand about it, about opening there next year and going on tour with it as well for three months. So that's good. Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm writing a script for the BBC. who commissioned us to write uh, an episode uh, uh, of a sitcom idea that we've had Um to see if they like it. Well, they like the idea. It's whether they like the script or not. And then, like with all these things, it's like, you know, everything goes at a snail's pace, you know what I mean? <laughs> so then you've got to wait for them to come back and say, oh, yeah, we like this, we don't like that, or whatever they're going to say. Um, and I do, I've been, I do um, script writing workshops to, like, colleges and sixth form colleges, universities. Uh, I was in prison last week. I went on last Monday about, uh, yeah, about doing them at, like, a Young Offenders Institute. When they got in touch with me, I thought they were trying to drag me back in, like, but <laughs> just visiting. <laughs> you enjoy doing that, then? Really good, yeah, I love it. It's really good because it's just nice. You know, you can see some really good writers coming through, and I do, like, uh, talk to them about my experiences, how I got into writing, and kind of then tips on, you know, narrative and good how to write good characters. And then I do like a workshop in the afternoon where I sort of, we sort of do like a first couple of pages of a sitcom together. Well, they do. And I sort of go around and have a look. But yeah, no, it's really good. Really enjoy it. Yeah, it does sound good. Uh, we'll get on to early doors later, but do you prefer the writing process or the finished piece? Like when you're acting in it and stuff? I prefer the writing. Every time, you know, I don't mind being in things, and I have been obviously, but uh, the writing's the part that's that, that I enjoy the most, definitely, and it's the most fun, especially when you know you're sat with people who you like, and you're trying to make each other laugh, and you know it's 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 just really nice. I mean, I've written stuff on my own, uh, and you know I can do it, but I don't. I don't like doing it. I much prefer to work with other people. Because I just think, especially in comedy, you want that thing where you're trying to put the ace down. So when somebody says something, oh, that's funny, but what about if they said that or whatever, they, you know what I mean? So you're all the time, you're sort of trying to, you know, you're trying to improve it and you're trying to put the the next best line down, if you like. So, but yeah, you know, best days of having writing. Uh, I've always been with other people, just because it's just much more fun, you know. Well, what was life like growing up for you in Stockport, and what were your childhood like? Yeah, happy days, pretty rum. Uh, we lived in a. I tell the uh, students this, but I think most of them just thinking of making it up. But when I where I lived, we lived in uh, in Reddish in Stockport, which is uh, in a terraced house. It's like you know, and we had the toilet. Um, in the gap, you know, outside toilet kind of thing, uh, that we shared with next door. But you know, I, 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 one of my big ambitions when I was a kid was just, my next door neighbours, a lad to the same age as me, and he always used to leave it till late, so he went to the toilet. So it was my ambition was to try and make him wet himself. So I used to try and tell him jokes and all that. <laughs> and what one day I, I I couldn't make it make it happen, so. I was in front of him, so I went in the toilet and wrapped myself around in toilet paper and came out pretending to be a mummy, giving it, oh, come to a mummy and all that. Anyway, he finally wet himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was shocked. Oh, he did laugh. He was laughing his head off. And then I got a bollocking off my dad for using all the toilet paper. <laughs> Do you, does your um, childhood influence your writing? Yeah, I suppose so. My mum and dad aren't really what you'd call, you know, 
hilariously funny people. My mum's quite funny, I suppose, in a quiet little way. My dad, not, not really. And, the, you know, so, but I think I, it definitely influenced me as far as, because me and Craig, actually, it, it turns out, we didn't know each other until we started in our teenage years, really. So we started working at Tesco's. Um, but we lived, we only lived five minutes from each other, uh, as it turned out. Um, but yeah, we didn't eat, we didn't know each other before before we met when we were working at Tesco. And I think, yeah, you, you know, you're right what you know about, don't you? So those characters, you know, like Eddie is sort of based, well, it's a lot of my dad in there because you know, you, you, you know, Eddie's like temporary traffic lights and all that. Best thing about it was when we did early doors, um, because my dad, you know, if I got got my dad and say, oh, I'm going to Bootle or whether I would go, nah, what you want to do? M56, right? What you going to do? M62, Liverpool. <laughs> you know, and he'll, 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 he'll sort of go through it like that. Um, I remember early go doors going out. So, what do you think about it, Dad? Nah, it's all right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Tell you what, though, that bloody Eddie, you won't like to be stuck with him. <laughs> you, you're stuck with him 24 7, mate. <laughs> but he still doesn't know. I've never told him. Yeah. Were you a big fan of uh, TV or writing growing up, or did that come later on? I was no, I always sort of wrote stuff. I always, you know, English was the only thing I was ever good at at school, and um, I always, uh, you know, I was a bit of a sensitive kid, but I always would be telling jokes and stuff. I remember we went to, you know, went to Pontins. It's like a holiday camp. It's like a open prison for working class people to, <laughs> like, and uh, I was up there you know selling gags and all and you know trying to remember jokes and stuff I always loved you know like uh, the Monk and Wise Two Ronnies Benny Hill you know uh, Dick Emery all those people growing up all those sort of like because uh, comedy was a big thing back in the day you know, there was like lots of sketch shows and lots of sitcoms on telly, which which just aren't anymore. But it was, yeah, all those like comedians, I'd watch them all the time. And Laurel and Hardy during the during the summer, uh, my mum and dad both worked, so we'd be left at home. And you used to have Laurel and Hardy uh, on BB on in the mornings. You know, different episodes. You used to watch them all the time. Yeah, so I suppose. So, yeah, growing up, I think it was, you know, I just loved watching, you know, comedy. And, and then, you know, I kind of, I was always pretty good at impressions as well when I was young. So, like, you know, and my dad would say, uh, right, uh, come here. And if my uncles were there, do him, do Tommy, do Tommy. I, I went to the doctors the other day. He said, you're ill. I want a second opinion. You're ugly as well. You know, so I'd do like <laughs> Tommy Cooper or, look at her, fun for all family. Or, you know, Kermit the Frog or whatever it was. And, I don't know, you just, I just enjoyed sort of making people laugh, really. I, I, you know, it was just something I knew it could do. So, yeah. And, you you know, it was just like a tool that I had in me, in me locker. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of, you know, I was always like at school, I was mucking about trying to make people laugh. I remember the first day, <laughs> the first day at my primary school, they were expecting a, a Spanish lad. Don't know quite why they were expecting, and, and of course I turned up. I was a bit, you know, dark, and um, you know, dark complexion. And they, oh, it is a Spanish lad. And I went through the day going, "Perez, you know, at lunch at lunchtime, it's like, hey, fifth, fifth and tea, fifth, fifth, no piss, no piss, no, okay, no piss. Uh, yes, I love beans or whatever it was. And I was like, they they bought into it totally. Oh, I, I mean, I'm sure I kept it, I kept it up for a day. Then the following <laughs> day, I'll give it the odd, yeah, yeah, are you all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just joking. I was just like, who is this nutter? <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that you first met Craig when you were a teenager working at Tesco. What yeah. was the first meeting like with Craig? First impressions of uh, him? Uh, we had an argument about, not an argument, but a disagreement about music. Um, so I was into 
uh, punk and all that stuff. And Craig was into uh, Pink Floyd and, you know, Genesis and all that lot. So I remember saying to him, he was saying, like, Lord, he was on a different aisle than me. I remember he was saying, all oh, that punk stuff is crap. I said, so what do you mean? And I've heard it all, it's crap. I said, no, it's not. Um, he said, then, but buzz, and I was saying, but what about the buzzcocks? He said, oh, the rubbish. He said, what, what, uh, he said, their album's rubbish. And their album was called Another Music in a Different Kitchen. So I said, all right, what's the, what's the, what's, what's, what's the worst track on the album or what's the song on the album you've heard? Well, I've heard the title track of Another Music in a Different Kitchen. It's, it's, it's just the name of the album. There's no song called that in your knobhead. And he was like, eh, it's rubbish anyway. And that was sort of, uh, and then we just got chatting and yeah, realised that we only lived a couple of doors, you know, a few doors away, not a few doors, but like five minutes away from each other. And uh, I think just said they were going out on a Friday night and I just like, I said, yeah, right, yeah, I, I could, it went along and that was it, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Both start working on a Manchester radio station after that. Yeah, Craig, well, um, I came to it later. Um, I, I used to go in on Craig's programme quite a lot. He worked on KFM. And um, I, I got a job in I mean, even though I kind of sort of did English and stuff at school, and I like, you know, I was crap at school. But to be honest with you, you know, and this is one of the things I say to when I go into the colleges and unis, you know, it's like, you know, you really, the facilities they've got and the access they've got to various um, courses and stuff in like media and film and and drama and stuff, we never had that at school. You know, I, we never had any drama lessons when I went to school. There's nothing like that. So, which I, you know, at school, I perhaps would have gone in a different direction and tried to do that. But because it wasn't out, was out there, you, you, I just went into an engineering job because that was the thing you did, you know. Um, but Craig works on the, Craig got a job on the radio. Uh, but I was working full time, but I used to go in on, on the programme with him as well. Uh, and then I did work there for a bit. Yeah, yeah. But that's where, because uh, Caroline started work on the same radio station, you know, on Signal, Signal Cheshire. Yeah, it's all like, yeah. Stockport's finest. Signal <laughs> treasure. Yeah, but it's like I could never work out. Why well, have we got a bloke who sounds like he's New York giving it Stockport's finest? Signal <laughs> treasure. You know, really, it'd be like me going, Stockport's finest, signal treasure. Get your ears around it. You know what I mean? You know, but yeah. How long after that did Mrs. Merton show come about? Uh, well, Caroline was doing Mrs. Merton as a character uh, when, she, when she joined Signal. So she was sort of. You know, she knew what she wanted to be. She she'd done. She'd actually gone to uh, Liverpool Poly to because she went. She was. Did she go? To, I can't remember which school she went to now. She went to a girls' school. I think they were a bit more because she passed through eleven plus. She was a clever girl, Caroline, and then uh, went to Liverpool Poly and did uh, drama there. So she sort of, you know, she do you know what she wanted to do? She wanted to get into, uh, like you know, comedy. So she started doing stand-up uh, sketches when she'd finished at, uh, at uni. So she was already doing Mrs. Merton on, on the circuit. And she used to do, hello. She used to do it on, we used to, uh, um, she used to do a little bit of like, hello, I'm Mrs. Merton, and all that kind of stuff. She used to do Mrs. Merton on the, on the radio as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, she was really funny. Yeah, very what funny. What were your first impressions of Caroline? Just lovely, really. She just knew she was really quick and really funny and like unusually quick, you know what I mean? I remember one time I like, you know, turned up and I had this sort of I'd say it was a bit of a you know, I thought it was a bit trendy or whatever, and I had this like cardigan on with big buttons, which I thought looked really good. And she said, Oh, we're all right, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your dad going to do today? I mean, well, where's he going to go now? You've got his cardigan on. <laughs> you, know, she'd like, you know, she'd be like, but she really, yeah, she, she's just, but really, uh, yeah, just good fun and kind of a bit, you know, a bit, a bit left field. You know, she'd like, she'd put, she had these silly glasses she used to wear all the time and 
fake teeth and stuff like that. You should just put them in, just put them on just for a laugh. She said, I'm going to go and when he comes in, I'm just going to put these teeth in and you just pretend like everything's normal. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So they get, have a guest coming in, whoever it was, you know, from some band or whatever, you know, the Manic Street Preachers or whatever. And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, and this is Caroline. Hi, how you doing? Dean, is it? Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been on tour. She just like talk to him normally with these teeth and you can see they're like, what's going on with her teeth? But, you know, yeah, she was like all for fun. Yeah. Yeah, you were in the audience for a Mrs. Murder show episode, wasn't you? I was in the audience, and I was in the band later on. So, so I was in the audience um, because she was a mate, and obviously Craig was a mate. Uh, so I was in the audience, and then um, after she split with Hooky, you know, um, she married to Peter Hook, and then they split up, and then. Uh, for the next two series, she said, oh, you know, do you want to come and be in the band? So, yeah, so I ended up being in the band for two series. That was good fun. We went to Las Vegas and all that with the, with the show, and they were really good, yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy working on the show in the studio and that, then? Oh, it was great, because we used to go in the recording studio and record the tune. You know, we've got the theme tunes for people coming on, and uh, that was always good fun. And... Uh, yeah, it was just, just, it was just a good laugh. The great thing about it as well, because we were in the band, so we didn't play any of it live. So we'd just turn up a couple of hours before the show started, you know, get changed, go on, you know, have a few drinks and that, because, you know, we were, there was no pressure for us. I mean, she was the one that was carrying all the pressure, do you know what I mean? Uh, again, you know, you can see on that how quick she, how quick she was, you know, because, I mean... You know, when she was on the programme, they'd be like, you know, you knew the guests, but you don't know how they're going to answer everything or what they're going to be like. So she had to sort of deal with that, you know, as it came at her. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. she had to be pretty quick on her feet, which she was, yeah. Like the Eubank one? Like the Eubank one, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't there at that one, to be honest with you, but... God, he looked like he was going to smack her, didn't he? he <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But he just kept stroking his chin. Yes, yes. I'm a, I'm a belligerent, brutalist, and all that. And thinking, what was he on about? <laughs> all, all the audience like, what's he, what did he say? Or all days. He's a poop, he's a what? He works for who? The pugilists? Who are they? They're a new band. But yeah, no, yeah, see, we, we, he, were, uh, he wasn't best pleased. Best part about it is he wanted to come back on the show after it. He did. After he'd done it. Yeah, I think he got, I think he realized when he watched it back, he looked a bit of a knob, probably. <laughs> And then, um, he got you, you know, he's, he's on the phone. Yes, it was a very enjoyable experience. Is there any chance I could come on again? And all that. Ah. No, not really. You're done now, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah, you have so. a favourite guest that went on when you were doing it? Well, I was on it when Bernard Manning came on. And that was, in a, that was like, it wasn't my favourite guest, but it was like. She did really... well with that one, didn't she? In oh, room. yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, he was. You know, I mean, I'd been to the Embassy Club, you know, in he used he had in I'd seen him quite you know two or three times, and you know the, the thing you have to say about Bernard Manning is that like as a comedian he was great, he could deliver a joke, but his material was despicable a lot of it. So you know, I think it was just really you know she called it out. So uh, yeah, no, it, it, it was a uh, I sat so we were dressed as um, in the band. <laughs> We used to have themes every season. One season, I think we were dressed as cowboys. And one season, which was a Bernard one, was on, we were dressed as gay bikers, um, you know, like leather bikers. And uh, I ran down to try and get a picture with him. And I uh, said, so Bernard, yeah, do you let me get a picture with him? And he looked up one look and he gave it piss off. And just like, he, he wouldn't have a picture taken with me. Did he, yeah? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I had like handlebar moustache and like all that business going on. And I give it. I said, Bernard, piss up. Well, I wouldn't have a picture taken. Would yeah, funny one. But yeah, he was a bit of a, you know. But but uh, I think was just a bit. You know, she did some. It was a great episode which that she did. Uh, it was more for the after party, I suppose. Really, we did. Um, she did an episode with Barry McGuigan, you know, the boxer and and um, Nigel Kennedy. 
And afterwards, because he bought his violin, uh, we, you know, I went in the green room and he had a few, we had all had a few drinks and a bit of something to eat. And um, he got his violin out and we were there for hours in just playing his violin. Barry McGuggan singing along, giving, oh, Danny boy, <laughs> and all that kind of lot. It was great. You should have recorded that, to be honest with you, because it was fantastic. But yeah, yeah, it was great. The old people in the audience, they were like themselves, weren't they? They didn't have like a script or anything like that. No, did the heck. I mean, Horace and you. He, 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 uh, uh, so I introduced Horace to Craig, and Craig introduced Horace to Caroline, and that's how he got on the show. Um, because he was uh, my one of my mates. It was a, it's a long story. He was in foster care, and anyway, we knew this he, guy Horace, and he, he was like a proper eccentric, you know, and he really made me laugh, and Craig laugh. Well, you know, he had like a really funny way of talking, and uh, he was a great bloke. Um, but he was just being himself, you know. When he's like, uh, well, Edwina, when Edwina Curry came on, he just uh, she just said, "Oh, come and sit next to her, Horace, and tell her what you think." Well, I definitely think that you're ruining the education system, and he was proper having a go at her, you know. <laughs> but yeah, 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 they were who they were. I mean, it was a bit when we went to Las Vegas. It was the first time half of them had been on a plane, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously she, she, she took a lot of the audience. And I uh, seem to remember we got, was it Cleveland? I know we didn't get a direct flight to Las Vegas and it was snowing. And when we landed in Cleveland, we were due to take off again. And because the snow was that bad, they were saying to people, look, there's too many people on the plane for us to take off. And all the old people were like shitting themselves, going, oh, you know, oh my God, first time I've gone. <laughs> Come on a plane and I'm gonna die. It was all that. They really went. They really like got upset, and uh, they were, you know, because the, the 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 cabin crew was saying, if you want to earn a two thousand air miles, um, and you and you can wait and get the next plane, we'll do that. So they're sort of bribing people to get off. <coughs> of course, then you start thinking to yourself, oh, crap. Well, maybe I should get off. Maybe this is my chance. You know, maybe it's gonna, you know, crash. Well, everyone was. Well, I was petrified. Everyone was like, I say all these old people, bloody colostomy bags flying around and all that everywhere. All these poor people, like all tenor ladies going ten to the dozen. <laughs> yeah, no, it was funny. <laughs> what about early doors then? When did that the idea of that come about? Um I think me and Craig had talk. Me and I missed out a bit really on on so there was a point where in the Mrs. Merton show where Craig had said, Look, I think you can, I could probably get you in. And, uh, but my wife, my ex wife, uh, she would just, uh, was pregnant at the time and I'd just got a new job and they were doing the pilot show and I was thinking, Oh, you know. And then with the royal family, um, Carolina said, Oh, you need to come and write on the royal family, you know. And I was like, Oh, great, yeah. And then she got ill. And then she went to Australia, and it was at that point, uh, sort of Craig was left really on his because you know, because she'd gone and he was he, it, at that point, then it was just him and Caroline were writing the, the royal family. So we talked about writing together, and we had, we had written not, I mean, when we were growing up, we wrote um things for the radio, we wrote a thing called Dick and Ken the Snooker Men for Mark Radcliffe and Mark Riley. It was just about these two snooker commentators. One was called Dick Cheshire, you know, so, and the other one was Ken Styles. So, but it was really kid childish humor. It's like, so listeners, because it, it was like Ted Lowe and old snooker, and so listeners, it's Ken Styles here, sat in the commentary box with a very proud Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Dick? Yes, Ken, you know, it was all that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we, we did that. And um and then we got together, yeah, just started writing. We started it off like it was a kind of village, really. So we wrote about a pub, about an older woman and a cleaner, a chippy we had. <coughs> but I think we just kept we just kept coming back to writing about the regulars in the pub and the old woman with a cleaner. 
So I think one day he just said, look, why don't we just combine the two and have her upstairs as his mum? We the pub we went we used to go in the three crowns in in Eaton Norris all the time just because it was around the corner from where we lived, and so the only characters really I mean all the characters there are sort of based on not you know a sort of an amalgamation of people like my dad and you know old Tommy's a bit you know like somebody you can go in a pub you know a miserable old bugger but um. In in the uh, three crowns, the two coppers were genuine characters. Two coppers used to come in the three crowns, come in through the back door. The landlord had, had like tottle off into the uh, <coughs> into the back door, into the back room, and they, they we could see them from the bar having a drink in the uniforms and stuff. Yeah, and sometimes if football was on, they'd throw a couple of overcoats on and stand there and watch the football. So <laughs> put the overcoat so you couldn't see the uniform. And we stood there watching the watching the footy. Yeah. And they were called Phil and Nige. And that's so we just yeah, so so yeah, they were the they were the only sort of real characters. Obviously, we you know made up a lot of the stuff that they did in the in the show in the in the comedy, you know, but yeah, that was them. Yeah, so it was that's how it came about, really. And then I thought we sort of thought naively that because they'd done the royal family and it was so successful that you know something that was like you know the love child of the royal family would would be commissioned straight away and it got turned down by everybody bbc one bbc two and tv channel four they all turned it down and uh we even got we went to uh, bbc uh and they said um why don't these people like each other we were like, what do you mean? Why didn't like each other? So, oh, well, they always like taking the piss out of each other and that. And we were like, yeah, well, that is. If they're not taking, if you're in a pub and nobody's taking the piss out of you, then you, that's when you start worrying. And they just couldn't get it, couldn't get it at all. And it was only we, we were lucky, really, because a new commissioner came in who'd been at Sky. He said, oh, just keep coming back to your script. I really love it. And eventually, after eighteen months. Yeah, we we were in. We we and that's how it started really. You ain't sure there they didn't get that when you were taking the piss out of each other, but that's how you and Craig first met in it, really. Well exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's how you that's what it's like, isn't it? I think it's difficult. And you know, it's I'm not saying, you know, the working class are great and the upper classes are, 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 are knobs because I don't believe that. But when you've got people in those positions who've never known that life. It's hard for them to read a script and, you know, and get it because all they, you know, they've not been used to, you know, they used to, you know, a lot of them are, you know, Oxford, Cambridge, you know, university graduates who know about drama as well, but but comedy is a subject subjective thing. I mean, when you write a drama, so we've done comedy, we did Sunshine with Steve Coogan, but when you write a drama, you know, a drama person can come back and say we should see that character again here to remind the audience of this that and the other but in comedy it's subjective isn't it and, you know we they come back and say can you make this funny funnier then if you said to a commissioner yeah how 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 should we do that then i don't know really because you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah it's like you know they can say things like oh they say bloody hell too many times can you take a few with them out yeah okay or they could say you know, we need a few more women in this because there's too many men in it. You say, oh, okay. But nobody, you know, nobody, no, no commissioner will say, I'll tell you what would be really funny. How about if he said, nobody ever comes back and says that because they don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's, you know, it's like, oh, well, I know how to, I know how to uh, crit critique it, but I don't know how to make it funny. Because if they could make it funny, they'd be writers themselves, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's funny to them? What's not funny to them is funny to somebody else, isn't it? So. Yeah, I think that's a difficulty. I think that's a, that's a, that's a difficult with comedy more than anything else. Is that, you know, it is the kind of... Even with Early Doors, even when it was... Success, you know, with Early Doors, I mean, it's... You know, it's oh, 20 years old. Over 20 years old. And it's probably bigger now than it than it was back then. And every year it gets more and more popular because, you know, 
younger people, well, you know, like you, you know, you know, because oh, how old are you? What, 17, 18? <laughs> 22. <laughs> yeah, do you know, hey, there you go. But, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll have watched it because you'll have heard maybe your dad or somebody saying, oh, you want to watch that? It's really funny. And then you watch it on the iPlay and you think, bloody hell. And good comedy. I mean, I know they don't smoke in pubs anymore, but, you know, everybody knows somebody that's miserable. Everybody knows a couple that are a bit naive, but a bit thick, but happy. Everybody knows, uh, you know, a lad who's like playing around and all that. It, 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 that those things don't change no matter how old you are. So it's yeah. just comedy is comedy if it's good and it, and it's it's funny it lasts you know yeah. how many com I mean how many comedies of the last five years will be doing I mean when we did the stage show it was mad for us it was two thousand and nineteen and we were playing like the the uh, Manchester Arena and the and Liverpool Echo Arena and all that and it was completely mind blowing for us because we were like. Because we'd left it that moment. And, you know, we sort of thought, well, it, it seems people liked it, but we couldn't believe how many people. It's like that thing. It's like when you like a band, isn't it? And you think you're the only one. Oh, I know this band. But, right. Nobody likes it at the moment. They're called Radiohead, right? <laughs> and then when they saw, you realise, Christ, they're like, we were like a... And it's nice, actually, because it's, it's, in a way, you, you sort of own it a bit. Because I'll bet you'll say to people, oh, I'll tell you what's early doors is funny. Or, you know, hopefully, if you think you like it. <laughs> but, and people will go, what? I don't know it. Or some people go, oh, yeah, mate, you know, oh, yeah. And, you know, you, it, it is one of those things. A lot of people won't have heard it. But then our fans, the early doors fans, they absolutely love it. You know, they don't, I don't think there's any in betweens with early doors. You either not heard it. Or the people who do like it, like absolutely love it. Yeah, so I'm dead proud of it. I think it's, I think it's uh, to to get it on because the the obstacles that we face with it. I'll tell you a story actually. Um, the BBC can't. Although I have I have got a sit come in with the BBC at the moment, so I have to be careful. Don't want to criticize them too much. But in the first, so early doors, first episode of early doors. Um, they said, right, we're going to commission it. And then they came back and said, there's, there's not enough women in in it. Actually, in, in it, in the main characters, there's six main female characters, seven male characters. So anyway, so they said, there's not enough women in it. So we were like, bloody hell. So we decided in the first episode, we, we wrote in um, a keep, keep fit class, like a bums, mums, you know, in, in like, you know, like an aerobics class. <laughs> So all these women come in in the first episode, go upstairs to the aerobics class, and they're like, oh, the commissioner's like, yeah, fantastic. And we said, yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's going to be like a regular thing. Anyway, they've never come down again because we, we only wrote it in the first episode just so we could get it past them a lot. So they all went upstairs to this keep fit class. Well, they're still there doing their own <laughs> aerobics because that was it. They were never mentioned again. They never came back down. So they'd be fit by now. But yeah, so that, that was it. We just wrote, we wrote, wrote that in. They're like, great. We said, oh, yeah, this is going to be a regular thing. And we never mentioned it ever again. But what that was, was just... What was it like when that first episode came out? Did it take a bit for it to get recognised? <laughs> yeah, well, they didn't know. Again, you know, it's that thing. I mean, they did the same thing with the Royal Family. They kind of hid it away. Um, we were on half past ten on BBC Two. Opposite the results for... I'm a celebrity. So, like, we had about, you know what I mean? So, there's only like me, mum, and dad, and a few mates who watched their thing. But it did get, it is one of those things that, well, actually, as I just mentioned before, in time, it's just, it grew and grew and grew, you know? Um, yeah. So, by the second series, uh, it was like, you know, it was, the triggers were going up. And this, they've got this thing called an AI figure in a, it's called an, it's, it says it's the audience index figure. And it's like uh, how much people have enjoyed the program. And that was sort of through the roof. That was like one of the highest ones it had. Um, yeah, so and when that's really, when we got to the 
after the second series, they called us in to do a third series. And we said, uh, well, we're not doing the third series unless you put it on before 10 o'clock. And they said, well, we can't guarantee that. So we thought, we were like, you know, like difficult northerners. Give it, well, we're not doing it if you don't put it on before 10 o'clock. And we'd, we'd started writing Sunshine then, which is what we do with Steve. And, yeah, so that's where the sort of standoff came, really. They wouldn't they wouldn't put it on before. They wouldn't They wouldn't guarantee us. That, you know, and we just thought, look, it's popular. People are liking it. You know, you put in loads of stuff that was just crap on before 10 o'clock. Why not put this on? Well, we can't guarantee that. So we just, me and Craig sort of took our ball in, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mentioned there, though, like, it's getting more recognition, like, as the oh, year yeah. on. But it's still kind of a hidden gem, and the fans yeah. of it are, like, diehard fans. Do you appreciate that more? Yeah, more yeah. I mean, I get, you know, there's a thing on uh, on uh, Twitter or whatever it's called, called uh, Early Doors Clips, and it's just somebody set up this, this uh, you know, this Twitter page where every couple of days they'll show a clip of Early Doors. It's got like 65,000 people, I think, on it, 60, 65, who are following it. I mean, no, when we, I think, like I say, it is that thing that uh, it is, a, it is the, the people, you know, I have people coming up to me, like I said, you know, in the pub, like younger people, you know, saying, oh, you know, well, my dad showed me, or oh, blah, blah, and I love it. And, and of course, older people love it as well. So it is, it's, it is, um, it's great that that um, people love it so much and appreciate it so much, and it's great that it's kind of stood the test of time. You know, it's like I say, it's on iPlayer, and I got the universities and stuff. And the amount of people there, you go, oh, you know, can I have a photograph? Or my dad's a massive fan, and I've watched it, and I'm a big fan of it to the regiment and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, so it's it's it, it is it is yeah, it's, it's nice. You get quotes like shouted at you and stuff from it. Yeah, the best thing is when people come up and start telling me like I don't know. They say, "Oh, <laughs> I look, what about hey, there's this bit in it, right?" When the two coppers are saying, uh, "You know, was he in a state of arousal?" and he says, "No, she was in a Ford Escort," <laughs> and they're telling me the lines like I don't know them. <laughs> you know what I mean, I give it. Oh, yeah, it's good that bit. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's uh, yeah, yeah. People like the the, the to the red joint is is you know that's a, that's the one everybody you know like give them a minute a gig or something like that somebody but I mean, it's nice people just come back give it all right fit to the regiment or when I got United a lot of them will you know because got I got a season ticket Old Trafford when I got United a lot of them I was giving it you know I was there at um at the derby um. Uh, uh, not the Derby, sorry, Liverpool. Uh, well, I was, was, it? I was yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So, my best game I've been to for about 10 years easily. But like before that, I was just uh, I go with my sister and uh, I'm just queuing up for a drink. And the bloke behind gives it, yeah, hey, all right, mate, but she in it, she in it. <laughs> then he gets his other mate, oh, no, he's stuffy, stuffy, and all that, and then. Taking photographs and everybody, you know, you see some people looking and giving, ah, oh, it's the regiment, all that. My sister's like just walking, she just did <laughs> on, she's like, oh, I'm off, you know what I mean? I'm not getting involved in this. But yeah, so it's really nice. Everybody's, like I say, you know, they shout out, you know, you know, crime can't crack itself. That's the other one. The other <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so but it's good. At least it'll be giving them something to uh, ch cheer up about at Old Trafford or it lately. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that was yeah. I mean, that was brilliant on on the. I can't remember when was it Sunday now. I can't remember, but yeah, it was Sunday. Yeah, just unbelievable. That I mean, incredible. Just like amazing. it was, and it was great because I know we're not talking about early doors, but it was the atmosphere was great because you know we went we we went you know one up and then we're all giving it loads and then the scousers it was like, you know two one and they're giving it loads and then it was three two three and we you know. It was just mental, but it was fantastic. Yeah, brilliant, really great. Yeah. Speaking of early doors, it got added uh, on uh, iPlayer last year. It was getting shown on BBC um, every Saturday or something. 
Yeah. Uh, you started like a petition for a series three of you were yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is I think it's probably, you know, uh, I mean, Paul, what's his name? He's passed away, didn't he? Um, Rodney. Rodney, at least who played old Tommy, he passed away about three, four years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, people just love it. So that, you know, and it is odd that, you know, the BBC never... I mean, when we did the live show, nobody from the BBC even came to see the live show. We know that. You just think, well, why wouldn't you? I mean, my own opinion is, is that when things get commissioned, the commissioners want to have that feather in the cap, like, oh, I was part of commissioning finding this. So putting early doors back on, it's a safe bet, really. So it's not like they're finding something new, you know, because it's already been done before. But really, in a way, you know, this is a problem with television. It should be reflecting the society. Get a bit deep now, in it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, you know, they're sort of saying, here's what you should be watching. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, what do the public like? Let's put that on. <laughs> So yeah. do you know what I mean? In in that way, uh, I think, you know, because a lot, I mean, I, I can't think of a, a decent comedy that I've watched on telly. I liked, there was a one, on, but it was an Australian one called Calling from Accounts. I don't know if you saw that. No, no. Really, oh, it was really good. It was really funny. And that was about a year ago, maybe. That was like, that was, that. I really liked that. I thought that was great. Um, but that's the only one. Don't know many British ones that are, you know, yeah. Well, I, I was going to say it's a shame we're not like giving the commission a series free because there's series like not going out that used to be good in the early days and now that's just. Have, do you watch that? That just repeats itself and it's. Yeah, well, I know, uh, I know, I know Danny Peak actually, who is who's also from Stockport. Uh, must we say that? It's a hive of writers, isn't it? Writing talent stuff. Or, or must be something in the water. Must be all that zinc in the water in the Mersey. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I think it's difficult to to keep doing the same thing. But you know what? I don't blame him. I don't blame the writers because you know. They just take, you know, they're keeping taking the paycheck, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. could, you know, maybe you could write something else in at the meantime. And I mean, that's what I would, you know. I mean, we've we've been turned. So we had a a, a sitcom in with the BBC. Me and Craig wrote a sitcom, uh, and um, they had it for about ten months, and then they decided this is about this is a bit a while ago, and then. Um, they decided that they were going to go with um, a new thing, a thing that John Cleese is in called Hold the Sunset or something, it was called. And it was just, it was pants, you know. Yeah. So we, that's the difficulty. You've got, you, you, you're, the commission it by, by uh, committee. You know, they all sit around and, what do you think of it? What do you think of it? And, you know, and ultimately, like with ours, it comes down to one person's opinion. You know, I had a sitcom that I wrote with a Bradley Walsh, that's, that's about 10 years ago, with Bradley Walsh here. Did a pilot for it, and the, the, the commissioning editor at the BBC said, oh, great, you need to write another five of these. It's going to be great, this. <clears throat> and then the new head of BBC One came in and said, oh, I don't, um, I don't think Bradley Walsh is a BBC name, so forget it. And that was that. So you know what I mean? You're, you're dealing with one person's opinion. So I always say to students and stuff like that, look, you know, or if you're going for auditions, it's one person's opinion. Don't. It's hard not to take it personally because, you know, you, you do. But it is. It's one person's. You've got to develop a bit of a thick skin, really. Yeah. So that's why I never, when we get stuff, you know, and they say, oh, we've been, the commission is to write a script or they do that. I'm like, oh, yeah, great. But there's always that part of me now that's like, no, don't get too excited because you never know. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no, it's just uh with early doors. I don't think I, I, you know what the cast would be up for doing it, I'm sure, if it was a series three, but I don't think that's ever that's ever gonna happen, you know. Do you not know? No, no. 
I mean, even when we did, I mean, Gold, Gold said to us, oh, yeah, uh, after the stage show. So the stage show, we were a bit worried about writing the stage show because, of, because we knew that the fans loved it so much. What we didn't want to do <clears throat> was write something that was crap, you know, that people would say, oh, I loved Early Doors, but why, why have they done this? You know, they sort of sold out a bit and it's not it's not like it was. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that we wrote something that was that people would love and it wouldn't tarnish the series, if you like. And I think we did that. I think anybody who came to the live show, you know, really loved it. So, uh, and that would be the same thing with the series. You know, I think, you know, from our point of view, we didn't want to kind of just... We would only do it if we thought we could, which, but we could, we could write, we could write another series of it, and that wouldn't be a problem. But, but, uh, but as I say, gold, when they came to the show, they were like, Oh, it's great, it's coming, we're like, we need to have a meeting. So, we had a meeting with them, and uh, with they were talking about recommissioning it, and we said, Yeah, we'll do it on gold, and this is 2019. And then they said, Um, right, uh. Can you change it in any way? You're like, what, what, why? Well, because for us to commission it, we'd need it to be like something, you know, a bit, a new angle on it. Like, well, why? What, what's the point in, you know, what's the point in like building a Rolls Royce and saying, let's, you know, let's put different wheels on it now or whatever? Might as well try a new sit, can't you? Yeah. Well, we just said, well, why do you want to do that? Well, for us to commission it, and again, it's going back to that. This is why I think, you know, then if 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 it was like it's like you know, um, open all hours. Yeah. <laughs> so they've recommissioned that, didn't they, with David Jason playing Ronnie Barker's part and bringing in some new characters. So they refreshed it and called not open all hours or still open all hours or what the hell it's called, and then they can justify it. Well, it's not the same as it was. So what we've done is, you know, we've refreshed it and they can sit around the table patting each other on the back about it. And I think that's the same with us. We wanted us to change it. So if we call it, you know... Still Last early Orders. Yeah, we'd have called it Last Orders and put, put you know, I don't know, an, an, uh, a landlady as opposed to a landlord. And, you know, then, then they probably would have been happy with that. But we were like, well, what do we want to change it for? Did you, we, 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 you know... This we they'd seen it at the uh, Hammersmith Odeon, which which is like I was you know I was thinking you know I don't know what we're going to, nobody's going to turn up at the Hammersmith Odeon to see it because you know they can't understand we'll need you know we'll end up sign language and they you know have somebody interpreting I thought we were going to have screens up that with with <laughs> with the <laughs> scripts on so they could understand what we were saying and uh, <laughs> but it was it was full you know it was packed out. And the, you know, so they could see how popular it was, and how many people we played to. You know, then we played to over hundred thousand people on that tour. And then when they're saying like, "Well, you know, we'll commission it if you change it," I'm like, "Well, no, we're not going to change it, are we? What's it, what, what, why would we want to change it? Because people love it as it is." Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Mad, you know. But anyway, so there you go. If yeah, you go. Very, if you're from the north and working class, you go into like a working class pub. You see all the characters that are in the early doors and stuff. But the comedy is very like northern working class as well, like the royal family where yeah. it's not like something. No, like only falls and horses when Del Boy falls through the bar. Yeah, it's like that is it's more like dialogue and timing and stuff. Is that yeah, what yeah. in the way as well? Then all of that combined. Yeah, I think the thing is we don't. Uh... We don't. So in the royal family uh, and in early doors, um, there would be a narrative thread, like you know. So they'd be like, like in the first series of early doors, let's say, it was about the fact that she was looking for a real dad. So that that sort of played out over over every episode, you know. First of all, she was thinking about looking for him. Then she sort of found him. Then they had a phone call and all that. So you saw that. It's like a series, so the story, you know, that spanned over the series. Yeah. But you know, I was never one for 
you know, which we used to get is, oh, it needs to, every episode needs to be, you know, this one's about, uh, the, the, you know, I mean, Fools and Horses is brilliant, but, you know, we never had like, oh, this one's about where the 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 Madonna is crying. Um, oh, this one's about where the the find in the selling you know spa water and it's tap water or whatever it is you know what i mean we we it was never like that ours were like you know this one's about who's who's wrote wanker on me <laughs> <We're all laughs> you know what i mean they were all tiny things they were all you know this episode's about they weren't particularly about ken's got abbott got a cold and you know everyone's saying have you tried eggs chopped up in a cup and all that you're the tiny but but everybody can you know that even that, right? You know, every my mum used to. It was if I was poorly, you know, I still have a laugh with her. So you know, it was either eggs chopped up in a cup or Heinz chicken soup. That would you know, and it's just like, why do they think? Why does my mum think that that's like you know? But but so that's what made us laugh because Craig, and it's just something that everybody you know everybody can relate to if you're poorly. Your parents, or whatever, will do give you some, you know, bottle of Lucasade or something like that. You think you go, oh, you know, I'm not having it. Sadly, that you know, but yeah. So we just thought that was funny, uh, you know. When and, and yeah, so I don't know. I don't. Uh, it, it ours is, is the comedy of dialogue. There's nothing funnier than people. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Nothing funnier than people. You know, you can have somebody. You know, you can have Mrs. Brown spinning around on a Christmas tree. Um, but you know, is it as funny as I don't know, um the royal family that you know, sat around the Christmas about around the dinner table, you know, giving it easy and lazy, and you know, and people just talking. So I don't know, you know, I suppose well, some people would say that it is funnier. I mean enough people watch Mrs. Brown's voice, don't they? I suppose to, you know, I'm not a comedy snob. I don't think, like, our humour is better than anybody else's humour. It's just that I think ours is more about the comedy of people. Yeah. And yeah. just height, heightening what people, what those characters, well, people love those characters. People like Joan and Eddie and all that and the cops and because there's a one... Well, one of the things I remember when we were writing it was... um a lot of was Shameless was on quite a bit. I remember watching Shameless and thinking, uh, you know, well, I have to be honest, I was like, oh, this is like a commissioner's dream, really, because it sort of plays into the idea that look at Northern scumbags all, you know, ripping each other off or doing a bit with each other's wife or, being on drugs or nicking stuff and and you know that goes on but that's you know I'm working class and I grew up in a working class area and working class people but yeah that happens but 99% of the time they're just like lovely people normal people with it with you know good hearts and sounds a bit cliche but you know Craig was the same and I think we sort of wanted to reflect that in everything we've done you know so there is a bit you know gyro jim is in early doors and he's you know he's a bit dodgy but there's a warmth about it as well you know and it's you know you know when we were doing you know when she finds a real dad and all that and we're all saying oh you're all right ken you know you know backing each other up and all that you know i i, I go in a pub in didsbury now and it's great it's just like, and it's still like that. You can, you know, I've got a group of friends, you know, we, we'll be sat there on Friday. It's the old, older boys, like who were in the 70s and 80s, us, a few of the younger lads in there. One of them's got a Barcelona, and it's great. I think one of the things as well about that, that you don't get these days, which is, which was great in back in the days, like with early doors with them pubs, is you get different generations of people mixing with each other, which you don't as much these days. And when you do that, you sort of find yourself thinking, "Oh, actually, I've got a bit in common." I didn't really, I didn't think that, you know, old 
old Charlie or whatever, that I would have anything in common with him. But then when he starts talking about, you know, I think politics or whatever, or his thoughts on things, you think, oh, but yeah, he's right. I think, you know, I think I think we miss that. Because, you know, I think people just talk to the on, you know, social media and stuff. People just generally talk to people of their own demographic and their own, uh, yeah, in their, of their own sort of generation. And there's a lot to be said for, you know, for mixing with people, you know, in a, in a community where, you know, of different ages, but, you know, the common thing being that you live in the same area. Bit of politics there, uh, you know. <laughs> do, you still, do you still take inspiration though from like everyday life when you're writing? Absolutely. Yeah, because that's where, it, you know, you can't write what you don't know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I couldn't write. Uh, you know, uh, the good life, or I couldn't write. You know, um, I don't. I'm just trying to think. You know, to the manor born, or whatever. Or I'm just trying to think of comedies that are like middle class comedies, really. You know, it's just I, you, you can only write what you you can only do what you do, and I know those people, and I know those sort of weird. You know, I find it. I love talking to the people who are just a little bit out there as well, you know, in the pub and stuff. This guy goes in our pub called, well, he's called Dancing Phil because he comes, he, he sort of dan he sort of dances around and does all <laughs> these hand gestures. And we start calling him Bon Jello Phil because he's got really tiny teeth. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's still like he's still waiting for him. And he's just uh He's just got this obsession with Tony Blair. I don't know what his thing is about it, but it's just hilarious. So, you know, I, to, I always give it the old, you know, if he comes in, like, and, you know, I'm like, fool, he was on telly the other day, and I know he's going to bite, and I was like, oh, ew, Tony Blair, don't you talk to me about Tony <laughs> Blair. He was a fall in the foot, and he starts going on with himself. And we're just, and every time, you know, he comes in, he, he comes in, yeah. Oh, we're taking the mickey out of his teeth and he don't know it. You know what I'm saying? I tell you what, gives you something to sink your teeth into. Oh, don't make it, Phil. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's all that, you know, we sort of saying, you know, doing all that kind of stuff to him, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it definitely gets, you know, inspiration from other people. And I think it's just, you don't know you're doing it or I don't know I'm doing it, but it comes out in the writing because you absorb you know, what's yeah. going on and how people are and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, who'd have thought of people what sat in a pub going, do you like circuses, would be really funny. But it just, it just, you know, and this is why I think when commissioners are reading people get going around the pub for a minute going, do you like circuses? Uh, I don't know, there are a few kids, aren't there? Yeah. What about you, Duffy? Do you like circuses? <laughs> there are, I mean, not for me, really. What about you, Joe? You know, can you imagine somebody reading that and thinking, well, this, what, what's, this is never going to work. But, you know, when you know you've been in a pub at early doors or whatever, and there's no conversation, people just talk bollocks. And that's, <laughs> you know, they just do. You find yourself doing it. And it, that's just that thing, you know, of just talking rubbish. Like, do you like then Eddie coming back? What are we talking about? Circuses? Ooh, I love circuses. Do you like circuses? Don't be all <laughs> oh, bloody hell, not again. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy writing on the Royal Family then? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. What I was mean, the I... writing uh, process like for that with you free writing? Like, how does it come about? We we, uh, we always write together. Um, the only this play that me and Craig have written because we wrote it. At, uh, we started it in lockdown. We wrote quite, we wrote over Zoom quite a bit. Which is the first time we've ever written uh, not in the same room. It's quite good, really, because well, we always write together. So we, we're with the royal family, uh, or oh, with the royal family, because Caroline had been poorly and she came back and. Uh, she wasn't great. She wasn't in a good way, really. She wasn't in a good place. So, uh, but Craig was like, you, you know, she needs to focus on something. We need it, you know, to, to help her, really. 
So I was like, yeah, of course. So we we go around to a house. She had a little bungalow in Timpley. And um, start right the royal family. But she was like, oh, I can't do it. It's just you two. You just coming up with stuff. I'm 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 rubbish. I can't do it anymore. I'm really down and having the right down on myself. I mean, no, it's all right, Caroline. It's good. This blah blah blah. And then she said, oh, no, honest, honestly, like, I can't do it. After a few weeks, after about a month or something. No, anyway, we went back and just put it into a some kind of script form, and then uh, yeah, she gave it back, and she was like, oh, oh, it's good, isn't it? Oh, I can see, you know, and and that sort of Gave her a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of inspiration. Uh, put a bit of wind in her sails, you know, for her just to carry on. And that's when we wrote the Queen of Sheba. Yeah. But it was, she's, you know, it was the sad thing about Caroline. It, it's the sad thing it is that uh, she was back in a really good place. And then it was cruel because, you know, with the cancer coming along. Yeah. Um, it was just really sort of, but, but the writing process, oh, we just have. Uh, Laugh like drains, you know. Laugh probably more than people watching it. <laughs> so, I remember the, the funniest day. I always said, I remember this really clearly. We did in in the Queen of Sheba. There's a scene where Dave's reading like a Mills and Boone thing to Nana, you know, you know, and she's you know, he's like, oh, and then he said, oh, look ahead in the road, hey, eh? oh no look ahead in the road <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so we're right you know, and i remember as all three of us writing that day really clearly and i can't remember if we see that scene now i can't remember who wrote what uh and how it came about but i just know that we were all really on the same really on it and really like batting it around and laughing and I just remember that day really vividly and I remember thinking, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Um, I just remember it being a, just, just a glorious day of, of uh, yeah, of, of writing and just being great. And I think we, you know, selfishly, we enjoyed that scene, probably lasts, it only lasts about a minute, but we've laughed all day long writing that. It's just brilliant, yeah. So it was just... Just lovely. And Caroline's great. She has no no ego as far as that's concerned, do you know what I mean? And the great thing was, was as writing as a three, is that if two of you, you, you can have a vote. Because, like, you know, we'd write something. So I remember in one of the, in one of the, the Christmas specials, or I think it's uh, the Golden Egg Cup, I think it is. It's when they go into the caravan. Yeah, Golden Egg Cup. <laughs> um, um, and um, he has a wee in a bottle in the back of the car, yeah, yeah. and then he throws it out onto the motorway, and it plays. I hope that someone gets my <laughs> message in a bottle. And Caroline was like, "Oh no, no, I think it's awful." That like, I mean, he's littering the road, having a wee in the bottle. It's disgusting. I said, "Oh, people will think that's funny." Oh no, so. And then Craig was like, "Yeah, I think people think that funny." So he said, "Right, okay, we put it to the vote." So then it was two against one, and that's what we do. And then in the same episode, I think Jim sat on the toilet because he can't fit in, his knees won't fit in the bloody toilet. And there's a big skid mark in his <laughs> under. And I, I'm like, oh no, that's too much. <laughs> Caroline's like, oh no, no, it's funny that. And Craig was like, it's funny that. So they're all right, let's put it to the vote. And of course, they won that one. <laughs> so it was, in a way, it was good because it stops. You're right with two people, you're just arguing, arguing your own point of view. There's three of you there. And it's like, okay, let's put it to the vote, and it's done. Yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. Were you on so, um, set when they were filming those? Uh, yeah, those? yeah. We're really invo heavily involved and always, you know, anything that we've done, like, over-involved, I suppose, really. I think you've got to be as well with comedy because it's not like, in many ways, in drama, you can write it and a good director can interpret it, but comedy is all about interaction and timing and the nuance in the voice and, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, the way, you know, the intonation and in where you say things. So you kind of got to be there. Yeah. I think we always have. We're always, you know, we always write together. 
Well, me and Craig aren't even, you know, say with the with the play, although a lot of it we wrote on Zoom, we still wrote like us face to face. You know, I have worked with people where it's like, oh, you write this scene, I'll write this scene. And I, I don't like working like that. I think the best to get the best out of people by being face to face and going, right, what about this idea? Oh, yeah, that's good. What if he does that? I much prefer that. It's for, for me, it's it's just, it's a nicer way of working as well, you know, because yeah. I don't want to be on. There's some, you know, obviously writers do, you know, like, you know, novel writers and things are just going to the shed and write all day long. Well, I have done that, but I just, I don't find it enjoyable. I just like, you know, don't like being on my own. <laughs> Friday <laughs> think, in the dark. <laughs> I think Queen of She was probably one of the best sitcom episodes ever, really, because it's fully in it, but there's obviously the sad parts and stuff. Yeah. yeah you won a yeah, BAFTA yeah. for that episode, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was great, really. I mean, it's the first time. So I didn't write on the early Royal, royal Families, and I was going to write on uh, a series, but then Caroline got poorly and went to Australia, like I said before. Then when she came back, we sort of encouraged her to write again. And her nan, her granny had died. And we said, yeah, okay, well, let's write, a, let's, you know, do something about that. And I think it is, it's a celebration, really, of her, of her life. Uh, you know, so there is something funny about when people are ill as well, isn't there? You know, they can find humour in it. Um, but of course, as well, it's a tragedy in it. You know, there's a there's a kind of, but this is what I, I you know I think I think in every genre whether it's whether it's a sitcom or whether it's a musical or whether it's a play you should be able to tackle all subjects really because they're all part of life aren't they you know in a sitcom or a, a musical or whatever you are reflecting people's lives that's what we go you know we you people enjoy certain things because it's reflecting it's like holding the mirror up to us isn't it you know we're all going to go through hopefully you know you know having kids or you know having mates or falling out with somebody or <clears throat> somebody passing away it's just part of life isn't it we've all been there so it's about how you deal with that and dealing with it sensitively and trying to you know and that's why people love that episode really because I think uh, you know especially my my, my favourite scene in it I think that it's the scene that probably won the BAFTA I think is the scene with the Nana and Barbara when she's doing her hair and it's funny it starts off you know the Nana saying oh did I tell you about my dead friend Elsie went out for a meal they had, she had soup of the day which was Friday and then she had uh, you know and she's like having a laugh and then it's sort of before you know it, you don't even realise it's it's going on to something more emotional. Yeah. And I think because it just slips into it, you know, and she says, Oh, can you do me hair? Can you do me toenails like next? next? And you can bloody hell. And she, she says, I'm not, you know, thank you, Barbara. And she starts going on about breaking the wishbone and wishing that she didn't have to go in a home. The conversation just drifts into something that becomes really emotional. And then when she says she loves her at the end, you probably know, especially working class people, like, you know, loads of people, she says, I do love you, Barbara. That's probably the first and last time she's ever heard her say that she loves her. My mum and dad are the same. My mum never says she loves me, but I know she does. I mean, I, <laughs> about my ex missus, she always used to go, oh, I love you to her mum. And I thought, oh, I'll try that. <laughs> so, so on the phone, I mean, I still do it now, every now and again. I give it, okay, mum, we're out, see you, I love you. And she just goes, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you never, never says it back. But, you know, that's just the way she, you know, that's just the way it is. I don't, you know, it doesn't upset me because I know she does and I know she yeah. makes the world of me, but, but it's just, I don't know, it's just one of them things, isn't it? So, yeah, I think I think people like the Royal Family because it, or the, the, certainly that episode, because... It handled it, and it was joyful at the end, you know, because they were having awakened. She'd had a good life, and then they put her on top of the telly, which is where she'd want to be, and <laughs> and life goes on. <clears throat> yeah, you had a yeah, no. little acting role in that episode. How did that come about? Hey, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, it was very. Did you see that? It was very. Uh, 
I was channeling uh, my Robert De Niro there. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well, I don't know, just for a laugh. I, mean, I think probably Caroline, because she's daft as a brush, would have said, hey, why don't you play the Jewish bloke? I don't know if we'll get away with doing that now. It is but, funny when he's dancing out the door, isn't it? Yeah, I'm giving it, shaking my head with me big. <laughs> yeah, so she said, you know, but it, so I had to have, you know, loads of, pres- you know, the bloody budget for that for me on that was probably more than anybody else because I had to have these ringlets, you know, like Orthodox Jewish people do with the hat and all that kind of stuff. But it wasn't like we were taking the mickey out. You know, it was just weird that Cheryl had got a date with <laughs> This old Jewish Jew guy. I don't think I, I just sort of come in, don't I? I come on, Solomon. We're going down the pub. Bevy Lamac has got a wonder on and I'm just sort of dancing around. <laughs> like, oh, thing is, me, me dad, again, it was like six months after it had gone out and give it. And my mum said, Oh, it's like you when you're in the royal family. What do you mean? He'd been in the royal family. I said, You know, when I played that, she, what? That was you? <laughs> No bugger tells me anything in this house. <laughs> Nobody tells me anything. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, he was like, I'm dead annoyed. Why don't I? Nobody tells me out in this house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm annoyed about Just a bit of comedy, Dad. You know, lighten up. <laughs> what was your favourite episode that you wrote with the Royal Family then? I don't know. I can't really say because I did love the Queen of Sheba, but I had so much fun and fond memories of... Uh, you know, I loved it when we wrote The New Sofa. A lot of people, I think with the Christmas episodes, because it was a Christmas episode, we we did make it a bit broader and a bit bigger. You know, you can't, because it's a, a one-hour-long special, we were trying to have it so they were actually doing something as opposed to just being sat around. So it, some people were a bit like, you know, oh, it's not as good as it was or whatever. Um. But I I liked the I loved it with uh, the new song with Tom Courtney in I thought and you know when they did the uh, when they did Dave and Denise did the Christmas dinner you know we're having you know first of all we're doing mingling then we're going to have a uh, soup cup of soup but with a twist well what's the twist well we're going to put it in a bowl <laughs> like that. It is just that, you know. Around it and again, you know, even little things like that was still about conversation. Right, I'm going to, we have our bread. Who wants oblongs and who wants triangles? <laughs> well, you know, that's just the thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, my mum would cut triangles if some posh people would. What are you doing triangles for, mum? Oh, your auntie Edna's coming round, you know, because she was a bit posher than us. You know what I mean? So it's just silly things like that that people recognise. You know, we're having... Tropical punch, it was just like Blue Wicked with a banana stuck in it. It looked like somebody had left a floater in the bowl. <laughs> but, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I've got just fond memories of of, of, of all of them. It's going be hard to pick out an episode. I know The Queen of Sheba is, is, is a, was a, a really good episode. I know The Queen of Sheba really touched, you know, people and you know with the subject matter and all that uh my big regret about that is that um liz smith didn't win the bafta for the best actor that year which she was up for she should have won it because she was just i mean she was 89 when we filmed that and if you watch the scene i'm talking about which lasts about two minutes it's just one camera she's got all the lines that she's had to learn and her performance is just she's just fantastic in it yeah, I, can't, I still can't understand why they gave. I mean, you know, Ricky Gervais is great, and I think they were doing extras, and he won it for extras. But she should have won that. I mean, she was amazing. Anyway, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, just lovely memories of it all. Really, just very lucky. Really, yeah. Uh, what about Sunshine? Because I watched that yesterday. Actually, I've never seen. Oh, did it you? Before, I watched it yesterday. Yeah, how did that come about? Um. Well. Uh. I think so. When the BBC were messing us about with the early doors, uh, we um, we thought we'd try and write something else. And I can't remember how it came about. I think Craig had seen something. Um, 
I think when you go to Leeds, I've seen it a few times over the years. I definitely remember it in Leeds. When you used to go to Leeds, they'd have like welcome to Leeds in flowers in on the bank, like or a you know, and you think, bloody hell, somebody must have planted those in February or whatever. And, you know, it's really clever that how they've done that. And then we got talking about it, I think, and then it was like, well, it'd be great to do, to, to, to do that. And, why, you know, if somebody would leave a message for somebody in flowers knowing that they weren't going to be there. And then, have you seen the ending yet, by the way? Yeah, yeah. So sure. Oh, thank God, I was ruining it for you then. <laughs> I'm ruining it for anybody that's listening now. <laughs> so we just, so we worked backwards, really. Just thought, okay, what could it be? Well, it could be, you know, it's a bloke, an old bloke. What could it, could it be an alcoholic? Oh, yeah, but that's a bit heavy because we wanted to have a go at writing something that's had a bit you know a bit of comedy drama and so uh and so yes yeah, so um uh we yeah we, we just sort of thought right let's let's give that a go and um yeah it, it, i think just because we 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 wanted to write something that had a little bit more bite to it i think a bit serious you know because it is you know, it's a serious subject dealing with addiction. Um, but we want to see if we can. Again, you say, I don't think you should shy away. I think even just because you're comedy writers, I don't mean to say you have to shy away from, you know, difficult stuff. Because, you know, it's two sides of the same coin, isn't it, really? Um, so, uh, yeah, um, we just we just want to have a go at, at doing that. And I thought... Uh, and Steve, Steve Coogan, absolutely loved loved the script, and um, said, "Yeah, I, I want to do it. I'd love to do it," which we were delighted about. And he was brilliant in. I don't think again, it's one of those things, Sunshine. I think you know. Uh, what did you like? What do you think of it? Yeah, I did like it. It's, it's deeper in it, and uh, yeah, than the other stuff. But yeah, I did like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny, um, but it's also, you know. Uh, hat in some places it's t- it's tough you know tough to watch but again you know I think we just want to write what to write something that was a bit more yeah bit 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 yeah bit grittier but uh yeah I thought Steve was I thought Steve Coogan was I, th- I thought it was great at, in it it's funny really because people have you know you say, I remember we were doing it at the time saying oh Steve Coogan's in it oh you know some people like really love Steve and some people are like oh I'm not sure what but I said, no, you didn't watch it. He's, he, he's acting, proper acting in it, you know. And I think he's great. I think he's great in it, mate. He's like, and it was, he was great as well. <clears throat> uh, really good fun because I was, because we were, obviously me and Craig were bin men with him in it. So we were stuck in a cab with him for like six weeks, uh, which is, you know, brilliant because he's just a really funny guy. And, you know, he because I do a few impressions and all that. And so we'd be like doing impressions and, all that, you know, good fun. Yeah, really, really good. But yeah, really enjoyed, enjoyed sunshine. Really enjoyed doing it. It's very different for us because it was obviously outside and different locations and all that kind of stuff that we've not done before. You know, so it's great. Have you ever wrote a scene in anything that you've done that's like changed as you're filming it, kind of thing? It's come oh yeah, and... yeah. With the royal family, all it's, uh, with the royal family. Uh, although I wasn't in it, but they would change a lot. Caroline would like say, "Oh, you know, we need a line here, or we need to do this here." Uh, with early doors, we, we pretty much, you know, it was as it was. There'd be the odd line here and there. We'd end up cutting things more than anything with early doors because we'd overwrite. So we'd get there on the day and think, "Oh, you know." We're gonna to have to lose this scene. I remember <coughs> one episode we were just we had about forty minutes as it was, so we knew we were gonna to have to edit it down. And we had another scene that we didn't film, but well, we we were supposed to film. And you feel it's really, it's you know you feel bad for the actors because they've learned the lines and everything. And then on the day, I think the day before, uh, I think I'd volunteered to say, uh, tell them. I think it was the two women upstairs. I think I said, look, we, we, we can't film this scene because we've got, you know, you understand, but 
you know, we're cutting it against time. We've already got running over time. And uh, we know that we'd only edit this out if we filmed it. So we just need to save time and all that. But uh, Royal Family was more for that. You know, Karen said, we need a, you know, we need a line for this or, you know, we need him to say something here. Or she was more kind of, you know, again, uh, thinking on her feet, really. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. I suppose because they like with the Mrs. Merton show, you know, going back to that, she'd be like, "Oh, let's change this." That's and we'd be like, "Oh, it's all right." It is no, no, no. Let's let's put this in or let's do that. So she did have a tendency to do that, and everyone would go into a bit of panic because we'd have to go and then huddle together for an hour to rewrite something, and <coughs> the actors would be giving it. What, what's happening? I don't know what's <laughs> happening. And, you know, directors pulling the the producers going, "We're losing time here. What are you doing?" and all that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was it was good. Have you ever had it where obviously you wrote it, but when it's uh, been said in time, like on early doors, like when they're actually uh, filming it, did you ever like laughed or bloopers and stuff like that? Oh yeah, Craig's terrible for it. <laughs> uh, when we did the uh, what the big one we did in early doors, it was me and Craig were in this scene, and um, it's Melanie's twenty first, and she asks him. She said, I was wondering, uh <laughs> I was wondering if you do uh the DJ in Joe. And like, you know, because he's been a Mickey Mouse DJ, hasn't he? You know. <laughs> I'm sat next to him as his mate giving it, oh yes. <laughs> and and he's like, Me, you want me to do the DJ? Oh, oh, that's magic. And I'm like patting him on the shoulder and giving it, you know, this is great. Well, he just I mean. He just couldn't stop laughing. Me, do <laughs> it, and I just every time I patted him and I was like smiling at him, like <laughs> like he, like like he won the lottery or something. He just kept corpsing all the time, just laughing his head off. I just said, uh, so the 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 first assistant director said, look, first of all, she got rid of uh, uh, Christine, who was saying, you know, we just wondered if you could do our DJ because she was laughing. Then she got rid of Dean, who was like her, like her boyfriend in it. Then she got rid of me off the set. So there's basically just like a lighting man, a camera, the sound guy, and this this first AD who's going, so, and she spoke like that, I wondered if you'd do me 21st for me. But he was still pissing himself laughing <laughs> when she was asking him. It just took forever. And he's just, yeah. And when we did, um, I remember we did... Uh, an episode of Early Doors where we were all going out to the York races and um, we, we had a breakfast in the morning and we're all sat around this uh, breakfast table in, in the pub, you know. That was chaos because it was like everybody had lines going and people were corpsing and laughing and it's, honestly, it was like being in a, a time capsule. It was like, you know, you're just in a bubble Eating, I've never wanted to see a cooked breakfast again for about two years. <laughs> Just eating cooked breakfast for three days, you know, when you're filming it, and then you know, they're bringing you more bleeding sausages, and you're like trying to pretend to eat them. And then you think, well, I better eat some of it because you know, I want it to look real. And then, like, cut, and you're like, oh, pfft, spitting it out. And blah. but yeah, well, that was just really good fun, and uh, and we were lucky really because you know, in the royal family and early doors. Everybody was great. You know, I know people say that's a bit of a cliche, but we everyone got on <laughs> a really good form, no egos, anything like that. Uh, and I've done other jobs where that just isn't isn't the case. Um, but yeah, we were we were lucky in that in that everybody, you know, we used to all go out for a drink together and yeah, just just you know, in fact I'm still in fact next week, was it this weekend? Uh I'm getting together with, uh, we're doing the thing at FC United for, uh, you know, charity thing there with a few of the early doors people, like uh, the, the coppers are there, hmm. me and, and I think John Enshaw's there. And so, you know, we still sort of see each other every now and again on different things, even though it's been that amount of time, you know. Yeah, yeah. How is Craig? Yeah. You don't really see much of him in the public eye anymore. Sound, yeah, no, he's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, oh, he's blue, isn't he? So he's like, 
he goes, you know, now now Pep's there, now they're successful. You know what I mean? He's uh, he's never away from the place. Um, but uh, so I think he does, and he plays golf, likes playing golf. So uh, yeah, it, I mean, he does. He's got the best job in the world, hasn't he? He does like uh, two hours on Gogglebox on a Friday morning, and that's him, you know. So, <laughs> But yeah, but no, he's fine. I mean, I spoke to. In fact, there's a good chance I'll be seeing him this weekend. <clears throat> um, there's a few of the lads. We go for a curry every few months. Oh, so uh, yeah, but he's he's great. But I don't think he's that. You know, I mean, the play that we've got. I mean, he'll be on that. He'll be like. But uh, but yeah, but yeah, he's cool. He's he's great. He's great. Yeah. Did uh, living the life. Did the death of Caroline like hit him hard though? That's kind of made him take a step back a little bit. Well, uh, I don't, I don't think it made him take a step back a bit because we carried on. You know, we rolled uh, uh, early doors, the live show after that. Um, obviously, it hit him hard, like it did all the friends really and the family. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he'd written with her um, for longer than anybody so you know he's particularly closer as far as that's concerned um but as well you know she was just a genuinely lovely person she's very kind caroline she's very very uh and thoughtful and um you know when anything I and mean, she didn't deserve uh, i mean she didn't deserve a lot of the shit that she had in her life. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, she didn't handle the fame very well. Yeah. She had a lot of mental health problems, you know, um, and then she had the cancer, you know. I mean, when we were filming, um, which one was it? It might have been uh, the Golden Egg Cup. She had bladder cancer. And she told us, and we said, oh, well, we're going to stop writing. Forget that. You need to get the operate. You know, she said, no, no. I spoke to my specialist because um, it was about a few weeks from us going into filming. She said, I can put the operation off. He said, it, he said it won't make it that much of a difference. We'll film it, and then I'll go straight in and have the operation, and you, you can edit it. So that's what we, you know, we were like, no. She said, no, that's happening. So are you sure? Yeah, yeah, we spoke, you know, because we were saying, oh, forget it. It's just get your operation. No, no, this is how we want to do it. And, yeah, so, so, you know, she had that, which she recovered from. She had the operation and uh, that was a success. And then, of course, she got fucking lung cancer. And then, you know, we thought she'd beaten that. And then, yeah, it's just tragic, really. Like I say, she was in a really good place in her life. And she was happy and sort of content. And that was a sad thing because she, and again, you know, even though, you know, she was brilliant, she didn't, you know, she, she, you know, it, she just had a lot of shit to deal with, you know what I mean? And you, and when, you know, when it's a, when it's a friend and you know they're a lovely person like she was, and really, you know, like I say, lovely heart, some of the things, she was kind, really one of the kindest people, you know, she, She'd think nothing of like dropping fifty quid to a homeless person or something like that. She wasn't, you know what I mean? She was, you know, she did loads of stuff for friends and family, and she was dead loyal as well, you know. Um, yeah, so I think it, yeah, it, it hit everybody. Yeah, you just don't want to lose somebody who's just a nice, a nice person in your life. It's comedy aside, really, just a, just a, you know. A lovely person, which she was. Yeah, so, yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I watched that uh, little documentary about her on BBC last year that it was out. Yeah, 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 it was on on Christmas. I couldn't watch it on... I've watched it since, but I couldn't watch it on Christmas Day because I just... I was at my sister's and uh, we'd had a really nice Christmas Day with my mum and dad were there and all that. And I was still having a drink and my sister had documentaries on that. Can I watch it? I thought, oh, and I said, no, I, I, I'd rather watch it on my own because I knew, I knew you'd get upset, which I did. Um, but I thought it was, I think it was lovely. I thought it was a lovely documentary. I thought it, it, I thought it was nice. Um, and I think Craig had a lot to do with that, to uh, which, which credit to him. 
because it had a lot of her friends in it, you know, and family and well, not not particularly family, but you know, people who mattered to her. Uh, and I think that's good because you saw like the real side of her as well, not just like the showbiz stuff, you know, yeah. like her mates who were talking about her and what she was like. Uh, because she just was, well, she was just dead normal. You know what I mean? If people come, you know, you know, people will come up uh, um, and talk to her and she's just dead lovely with everybody. She wasn't, you know, she was just a normal girl. It was, it's a normal girl with a kind of, abnormal comedy brain it was, yeah. which was fantastic but she didn't she she wasn't she didn't she, you know she wasn't up her own ass if you like she didn't believe her own hype <clears throat> she was just funny yeah and a bit bonkers <laughs> <laughs> it is a shame though people like that that are down to earth and nice and they have to put up with all the shit that she did yeah, yeah, well, I think, yeah, that's the thing. She, she, she wasn't wired to cope with it, you know what I mean? Some people can, but she couldn't, uh, and that's when it sort of spiralled, or she spiralled a little bit out, you know? And um, I think you need... I mean, she went to London, she moved to London. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, what, you know, you need... If, for me, I think you need to set, try and keep grounded and keep people around you and not, you know, people who are going to say, well, look, you know, maybe you don't need to do this or maybe you shouldn't do that or maybe, you, you know what I mean? She had a lot to deal with. You know, the press were on her. You know, I remember going around to her house one time. We were all going out on New Year's Eve. It was when she was living in Didsbury. And I went to pick her up. And uh, I was ringing on the bell. I couldn't. There was no answer. I thought, she knows I'm coming round. Anyway, I rung up, I rung the phone. She went, oh, well, I feel right. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll be out in a minute. So like, where were you? So I've been in the, waiting for you for five minutes. So I was in the garage. So what are you doing in there? She had all the paparazzi who have been round and ringing up and got, oh, well. And it was just really doing me head in. So I went in the garage because I can't hear it in there and just took a book and was reading. And when you think that some girl on her own, woman on, on her own, asked to go in her garage and sit there with a jacket on and read to get away from his knobheads who are at the front ringing on the doorbell. You know what I mean? That's the kind of... that That's the stuff that people don't see, and that's the... You know, there's a sadness in it to that. Yeah. And you think, you know, she's there. You know, she's vulnerable. She's a woman on her own, and you've got these... They're ringing on the doorbell and asking her, you know... He's going through a bins and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and she's there sat there in the garage with her overcoat on. So she's to get away from it. Just, yeah, not good. But so she, she had a lot to deal with. And, you know, she found it difficult to deal with. Um, and I, But, as I say, and that's why she sort of stepped out of the line. Like, other than the royal family being on set, she didn't go out. You know, she'd go... Maybe to cost a coffee, or she, oh, we'd we'd go out to the pub maybe and just have a have a, a for a bit of lunch. Sometimes the odd time, uh, yeah, you know, she wasn't she wasn't one for doing anything really. She quite like just, I think she just liked the quiet life really. Can you remember yeah. that last time you seen her? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but. Yeah, it was just sad, really. Yeah. 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 Um, so you was on a bit of a light note. You was on Coronation Street and Emmerdale. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For a while. Um, well, I've got a mate who's a director, and um, they were looking for, on Coron well, on both of them, really. <clears throat> a guy called Ian Bevitt, who's a fantastic director and a fantastic bloke. And um, he sort of said, you know, uh, like with the Coronation Street one, like recently, he just said, look, there's a part here. Um, you, it's um, Arabella Weir's husband. You know what? Um, in the fast show, yeah, Arabella yeah. Weir. You know, yeah. So I've um, watched the I've episode never... of the Coronation Street episode, so I've seen you in it. In oh, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I've not, I've not met Arabella before, and um, 
it was great actually because uh, we got we just clicked like that straight away. It's really funny because we went on set. I met her in the makeup room. I was chatting to her. And of course, I know that she knew Caroline. And she knew I did and all that. John Thompson. I know John and a few people. So we had that in common. And we just had a bit of a laugh and all that. And then when we got on set, we were chatting away and this, that and the other. And everyone's like, so how long have you two known each other then? So we were like, about an hour. I'm like, you're joking, are you? You know, you bloody hell, you're like, you've known each other for years. And we just sort of clicked really straight away. So it was great. I really loved it. I mean, I was only there for about a week. Um, but I kept in touch with Harry. And she's, uh, I've seen her since actually. So she came down and did something and, and and I went for a drink with her, and uh, I'm going. I'll go and see her when she's in the fast show because they're touring it. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that was good fun. I really enjoyed it, I thought, especially because she was, uh, you know, got on well with her, and and um, and uh, yeah, and my mum was dead pleased because I'd been on Coronation Street. I'd, I'd finally done something with my life, actually being <laughs> on Coronation. You know what I mean? She she still loves she still watches Coronation Street, you know what I mean? So she was uh oh yeah, fantastic. Two things I was most proud of is that I did I was in Pantomime at Stockport Plaza and I was in Coronation Street. Everything else, you might as well you can you can stick it in the bin. They're, they're the big <laughs> things. They're the they're the heights of my not the bath or anything like oh, that. Oh no, man. forget about that. It's just holding the toilet door open. That's for my mum, you know what I mean? She's she's uh yeah, Stockport Plaza and Coronation Street. <laughs> They're the two things that she, yeah, that they're the big career heights for me. Which should you prefer then, Coronation Street or Emmerdale? Uh, probably Corrie because of, because I'm at Arabella and yeah. I've just gone gone so well with her. Yeah, yeah, she just uh, yeah went out for a curry with her and say you know we just got on, you know just got on really well. So yeah, that just because uh, I met her and she was really and and yeah she's got a new mate. So yeah, no, she's lovely. Yeah. Well, we're at the end of the interview. Is there anything you'd like to plug, like your social media or uh, your website where you workshops, like anything like that? Uh, not really. When my website, we, you know, I uh, mean, my my uh, it's filmily dot com is my website. That's where you know. But uh, uh, me thing is, but also these, I've got an early doors podcast that I do with uh, that somebody started, which is great. That's just good fun. So if anyone wants to know a bit more about Early Doors, they can always listen to that. But other than that, you know, I do play guitar, bar mitzvahs, weddings, funerals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Great you name you. it. I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. You name it, I'll turn up. Open the fridge door, I'll do 15 minutes when the light <laughs> comes on. Yeah, all good. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I really. Oh, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's been really nice talking to you. It's been great. Yeah, I've really enjoyed that. All right, mate. Nice all right. one. Thank you. Fantastic. See you in a bit. Cheers.